This video is over Lesson 79 for Algebra 1, and the title is Factoring Trinomials by Using the GCF. Now, since we're going to be factoring today, I would highly recommend that if you're having a little bit of trouble remembering how to factor, check out Lesson 72 and Lesson 75 for help with that. So here we go. Our first example today is going to be x to the fourth power plus 5x cubed plus 6x squared. So remember when we're looking for the GCF, we look at each term and you need to ask yourself about the, the numbers, the coefficients, as well as the variables. So as I look at the, the numbers, I got a 1, a 5, and a 6. Uh, there's nothing that I can pull out of each of these, nothing I can factor out of a 1, a 5, and a 6. So then I look at the variables. Well, x to the fourth, x to the third, and x squared. This means I can pull in x squared out of each of these. So then inside of my parentheses will be whatever would be left over after we pulled out the x squared. So pull an x squared out of that, I'll still have an x squared left. Pull an x squared out of the next term, and I'll still have my 5, but now I'll just have a single x. And then finally, if I pull an x squared out of 6x squared, we're just left with a 6. So this is factored, but not completely. So now we need to consider, can we factor this trinomial? So we need to consider what is our b and what is our c. So remember, it's usually easier if we start with c. So in this case, c is going to be something times something that has to equal 6. So since this is positive, I know these will either be both be positive or both be negative. b will be something plus something, the same somethings here, that equals this time 5. Now since this is positive, it means that, well, if these are the same, well, obviously these got to be both be positive to come up with a positive. So if we start with multiplication, there's only so many things that multiply together to make 6. So we've got 1 times 6, we've got 2 times 3. Now if we consider that, do 1 plus 6 make 5, or do 2 times 3, or 2 plus 3 make 5? Well obviously, 2 and 3 work here. So we can factor this further by making it x squared times the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the polynomial completely factored. So let's try another one out here. Now we're going to do several examples. I would recommend that as you start getting more comfortable with what we're doing, uh, I would recommend that you actually pause the video regularly, um, copy the problem, pause the video, and try to work out the problem for yourself. Uh, and then hit play to see, did it work out? So um, here we go. As I look at this, oh, I'm sorry. That's supposed to be 80x. If you paused earlier and you're just discovering that now, my apologies. I didn't quite catch you soon enough. So 80x, pause again, try to fix what you had then. Uh, as I look here, I'm looking for what can I pull out of each of these? Well, obviously I can pull a four out of each of these. And then x cubed, x squared, and x, I can pull in x out of these. So four x is my greatest common factor. And then I will have left over an x squared minus x minus 20. So this means that my c, so something times something, will have to equal a negative 20. Remember to treat minuses like negatives. So something times something is a negative 20. So since that's a negative, these two things will have to have opposite signs, one positive, one negative. So b is that same something plus the other something. 
and this time it has to equal a negative 1. So only so many things multiply together to make 20. So I could do 1 and 20, but then there's no way I'm going to be able to add them to get a negative 1. Uh, I could do 2 and 10, but again, you know, negative 2 plus 10, negative 10 plus 2, not going to work. Um, I could do negative. I could do four and five. So if I do four and five, oh, they they are just one apart from each other. So uh, I am going to do four and five. Now the thing is, which one of these should be negative? Well, when I add them together, I want it to be a negative. So it means five here will have to be my negative. So this factors completely to four x times the quantity x plus 4 times the quantity x minus 5. For our next example, we're looking at 6x to the fifth power plus 6x to the fourth power minus 12x to the third power. And I promise you that really is the problem. Problem. So you're safe to pause. All right, here we go. So 6, 6, 12, obviously I can pull a 6 out of each of these. x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, I can pull an x cubed out of each. So left behind here will be an x squared. Out of here will be an x. And then out of here will be a minus 2. I close my parentheses. So again, looking at my b and my c, so this means something times something this time has to equal a negative 2. And so then we know that they'll have opposite signs. And then that same something plus the other something has to equal a po positive 1. Well, 2 is prime, so that makes this pretty easy. It means it really only can be 1 and 2. But if I'm going to add them up, then they got to have opposite signs. If I want a positive, it means my bigger one must be positive. So the negative this time must go to the 1. So therefore, completely factored, this is 6x cubed times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. Next up, we're going to look at a negative x squared plus x plus 56. So when I look at this, I see the negative. So this is really a negative 1. This is a positive 1. And then obviously a positive 56. Uh, when it comes to factoring, we really don't like this just being a negative x squared. So actually, what I'm going to factor out of this is I'm going to factor out the negative. Uh, Number-wise, there's nothing I can factor out of that. And then, uh, as I look at it, uh, variable-wise, I can't factor anything out either. So if we consider this, this negative here would really be like a negative 1. So if we factor out a negative 1, negative 1 times what gives me a negative x squared? Well, x squared. And a negative 1 times what gives me a positive x? Well, a negative times a negative gives me a positive, so this actually must be minus x. And then finally, a negative 1 times what gives me a positive 56? Well, a negative 56. Now if we factor from here, so my c this time, this times that, must equal a negative 56. b, this plus this, must equal a negative 1. Well, obviously, 56, there's, there's one thing that probably comes to your mind, first of all, and that's 7 times 8. Well, sure enough, if I have a 7 and 8, one's positive, one's negative, I can get a 
negative out of that. But in order to get a negative, it means that the bigger number must be negative, so that's my 8 this time. So this is going to be a negative x plus 7. Oop, where did I get 5 from? x plus 7 times the quantity x minus 8. All right, and if we continue, this next one's going to be a little bit on the unusual side as well. We're going to have b, that's a b, not a 6. b, 6 is curved, b's are straight, times, or excuse me, plus 9bx cubed plus 20bx squared. So, number-wise, 1, a 9, and a 20, nothing I can pull out of each of those. Variable-wise, they each have a b. And more than that, they each have at least two x's, so I can pull out an x squared. So bx squared is my GCF. Now what's left then, if I pull a b and two x's out of that, is an x squared. If I pull a b and two x's out of that, what's left is 9x. And if I pull a b and two x's out of that, plus 20. So in this case, our c, remember, is the constant there, 20. And then b is the coefficient 9. So what times what equals 20? That when I add them equals 9. Well, since this is positive, we know these will be the same. So both positive, both negative. Since this is positive, we know that they, well, they have to both be positive to add up to a positive. So what plus what gives me 9? What times what gives me 20? Um, you probably realize already 4 times 5 gives us 20. 4 plus 5 gives me 9, which means that this factors completely as bx squared times the quantity x plus 4 times the quantity x plus all right here we go and we're going to uh, do just two more examples together so our next one uh, will be a little bit harder so this time we're going to go 6x to the 6th power minus 11 x to the 5th power plus 3x to the 4th power. So looking at this, uh, 6, negative 11, and a 3. 6 and 3, I could have taken 3 out of both of those, but uh, I can't take a 3 out of 11. So we're just kind of stuck number-wise. Variable-wise, each of these has at least 4x's, so I can take out an x to the 4th power. That leaves me with 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. Now, since this does not have a 1, hidden 1 as the coefficient for my x squared, we're going to have to do this one like we did in lesson 75. So now we've got to actually consider all three uh, constants, a, b, and c. So in this case, a, remember, is our first. And so that'll be something times something that gives me 6. B is our outside plus our inside. And so B this time is a negative 11. And finally, C will be our last. So something times something has to give me 3. Now in this problem, I would recommend starting with C. Uh, starting with either A or C, starting with the things where it's just simple multiplication are going to be the easiest. So when I look at this, uh, well, something times something is 3. 3 is prime, which means that pretty much this has to be a 1, and that has to be a 3. So I've got a, a 1, and i got a 3. So something times 1 plus something times 3 
has to equal a negative 11. So that means that this product here plus that product there has to be a negative. But up here, so this times this is going to give me a positive. This times this gives me a positive. So we need to get those negatives in somewhere. So given the choice, I can put them either up with my first or I can put them with my last. We do not like the first to be negative, remember. So actually, I'm going to come down here. And I'll make those both negative. So now something times negative 1 plus something times negative 3 has to equal a negative 11. So we consider 6, uh, if I say 1 and 3, well, if I put a 1, or excuse me, 1 and 6, if I put a 1 here and a 6 there, uh, that's not going to work. 6 times negative 3 would give me negative 18. That's too much. Um, if I switch them around, that would be uh, 6 times negative 1 and a 1 times negative 3. That will come out with a negative 9. That's, that's not going to work for us. So let's go to 2 and 3. So if I consider 2 and 3, so if I do a 2 here, 2 times negative 1, and a 3 here, uh, 3 times negative 3, so that would be a negative 2 plus a negative 9 is a negative 11. So this must be a 2, and that must be a 3. So it's a 2 and a 3 for the first. So now, let's put it together. x to the fourth power times the quantity. Now, if you want to follow what you have here in your chart, this means that 2 and 3 have to be the first. So I'm going to have a 2x and I'm going to have a 3x. I'm going to have a minus 1, I'm going to have a minus 3. But we've got to make sure we put them in in the right spots. So if you follow the chart here, you can actually just get it right away. So this 2 is a first, but it's a first that's on the outside, we decided. So that would be on the outside, because the other quantity, its x value is going to be right there on the inside. So if that's my 2x, that must be my 3x. Finally, this negative 1 is a last, but it's the last that's on the outside. Well, this last would be on the inside, so this last must be where my minus 1 is. So therefore, this must be minus 3. Again, remember, do a quick FOIL to double check this. So out uh, first, 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Outsides, 2x times minus 1 is a negative 2x. Insides, 3x times negative 3 is a negative 9x. So negative 2x and a negative 9x makes negative 11x. And then finally, a negative 3 times a negative 1 gives me a positive 1. This is my answer, completely factored. All right. And last example here, we're going to take a look at 8x cubed plus 8x squared minus 6x. With an 8, an 8, and a 6, I can pull a 2 out of each of those. And then obviously I can pull an x out of each, so 2x is my greatest common factor. And then if I pull a 2x out of that, I'll be left with 4x squared. Pull a 2x out of that, I'll be left with a 4x. Pull a 2x out of that, I'll be left with a negative 3. So in this case, my a is my first, so something times something has to equal this 4 right there. My b is my outside plus my inside, so outside plus inside, and so b is 4 as well. And then finally c C is my last, so something times something has to equal negative 3. So again, uh, I'm going to notice that 3 is prime. That's a nice starting place. So I know that's a 1 and that's a 3. Uh, the only thing is, is one of them, which one's negative? Which one's negative? So we know one of those will be negative. We're not sure which one's just yet. Over here. I know that I, I need this turn out as 4, so I'm going 
consider what do I want this to be. So it could be a 1 and a 4, it could be a 2 and a 2. Um, so if we consider that, um, let's maybe go with, hmm, let's say 2 and 2. 2 and 2 sounds nice. So that means that this is a 2, that's a 2. And so where would I want my 1 and my 3, and which one do I want negative, which one do I want positive? Well, if I want this to add up to a positive, let's make my, my 3 the positive, and let's make my 1 the negative. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 6 plus negative 2 is 4. It works. So remember, these are a bit of a puzzle. If you if you tried 1 and 4 there, and 1 and 4 didn't work, well, just try 2 and 2. Just keep trying until you find it. So final answer, so 2x. And remember, we're going to try to put this in order based on what I have here in my chart. It just makes my life easier. Well, now, obviously, I know I'm going to have a 2x for each of these, a 2x and a 2x. So that does make things a little bit easier, um, actually a lot easier, because we know that we're going to have a minus 1, and we know we're going to have a plus 3. And because multiplication is commutative, you can just switch these around and they're the same thing. So it really doesn't actually matter this time if it's a plus 3 and a minus 1, or a minus 1 and a plus 3, just as long as you got them both. Ladies and gentlemen, that is lesson 79.